Uh, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Creator Fest 2022 here at Skybound Expo. Um, these expos are so awesome. They always give us a chance, me specifically, to talk to so many interesting uh, artists, show you guys some of the awesome work that we got going on. Uh, but since it's Creator Fest, I uh, really wanted to highlight the work of one of my good friends, uh, Bags43, a.k.a. my buddy Dennis. Uh, and this guy, when you see his work, you're going to see what I'm talking about. We all, as artists, search for a style as we're developing, um, you know, trying to find a way to stand out, to be recognizable to you guys. So when you walk by our work, you go, oh, that's an Attack Peter. Oh, that's Bags. Um, and in that process, there's all these changes and evolutions and things that you find that you love. And then little by little, you start to hone a style. But the awesome thing about my buddy uh, Bags is that he's kind of honed a couple of different styles that are both incredibly awesome. And I want to showcase that, have him talk a little bit about it, uh, and show you guys some of the incredible work. So, yeah. What's up, dude? Welcome. Thank you for joining me here. Hey, what's up, Peter? Yeah, thanks again for having me, man. Much much appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so if uh, those of you who've been following me on my YouTube channel or on social media – um, you may have heard me talking a little bit about uh, Dennis's work. Um, recently, I had a, a solo art exhibition in San Francisco at uh, Spoke Art Gallery. Um, shout out, Ken. What's up, dude? And uh, the gallery also owned by, um, by our friend Ken Harmon is Hashimoto Contemporary, the, two doors down. And none other than Dennis himself, Bags, was showing his latest collection of artwork. So it was awesome to see him again after so long and also see the new uh, body of work, which we'll get into. But, uh, yeah, man, coming off that right off the bat, how was that for you, dude? Um, we'll show a little bit of that work here. But uh, how did it go for you? It was so great to see you getting back into the wild, probably like me, that you haven't gone out that often in the last couple of years. But being out there, seeing the people, showing the work, how was that, man? Uh, yeah, overall, it was great, man. I mean, like, for one, you know, like, having the opportunity to kind of, uh, you know, show, ha well, have a, in a sense, it was kind of like dual, dual opening, right? So, like, it was cool that, you know, you had the opportunity to kind of come through and showcase your work, and then simultaneously, we have, like, the opening at the same time. So, it was, it was great, you know, having, like, the, the, the shared uh, experience in that, in that regard. And um, it was also been a while since I've done, like, a solo show, you know, um, and being that, you know, the pandemic has been going on still, like it was kind of an interesting kind of transition into, you know, being uh, being at like an opening and like being social and, you know, but uh, yeah, for overall, overall, though, it was, a, it was a great, great experience. Yeah. How was it for you? Oh, man, it was great. And, you know, I was in a point to the fact that we're so fortunate that uh, we had, you know, the gallery is fantastic, but the crowd turned out fantastic. And I think it was kind of like this awesome you know, for a lot of people, it was probably their first time really getting back out into this kind of event. And after, like mm -hmm. you said, after the years and being able to, to kind of harness that great energy and have the work side by side, it was awesome. And uh, speaking of the work, I wanted to get into this because I first met you and discovered your work. I want to say either Designer Con 2018 or Five Points 2019. Two great shows. <laughs> um, if you guys have ever had a chance to check out Designer Con, you know what I'm talking about in uh in anaheim and uh if not you should definitely check it out five points is in brooklyn um but yeah they're great shows to highlight uh independent creators and and a, a different type of art all around but yeah i met you there and you had this incredible uh art style um it's very illustrated pen and ink brushwork um can you talk a little bit about that style and uh and how did you like get into it and develop it and uh what it's like you know working like that yeah well yeah thanks again man uh yeah from what i recall uh, i believe uh, we met at uh five points in 20 yeah 2018 i believe but uh yeah it was like my first time doing that event and uh yeah like i was there showcasing you know just a mix of my my products like everything from shirts to you know posters and also selling originals but uh but yeah to, to answer your your question about like uh my ink work um uh, safe to say that that was just like more of a, an organic process in regards to kind of picking up that medium. Like I, I have a tendency to kind of hop around a mix of different mediums, but um, ink in particular, for whatever reason, it just became like one of the most natural uh, meeting, mediums for me to kind of gravitate towards. Because, I mean, I enjoy drawing, but I also enjoy painting and um 
I got into doing a lot of like brush ink work and for some reason either like the tool or the medium kind of like was like a nice mix between the two just because you know working in a brush uh using the brush tool is like you know how obviously there's like parallel between like you know that and like doing ink work and painting but um for the most part it was just like an, an organic um transition into working into that and and the fact that it's something that i can knock out really fast but also kind of get more of like a complete finished image you know after kind of like putting some you know some effort into it but um but yeah it was just something that that kind of just naturally uh i guess be, became part of my i don't know my range of, of type of imagery that i used to make so yeah so um the other thing i noticed is and you know, I used to experiment with brush and ink stuff. I think one of the things you're talking about that I really gravitate towards is this kind of like kind of direct connection with a material, a certain medium. Like you pick up um, a great brush, a great, uh, you know, this rich black ink, and you get into a, a sketchbook, some great paper. And like you said, it, it feels like an extension of your hand almost, and it, and it does feel very complete, very finished, very bold. And a lot of your work kind of, well, not kind of. A lot of your work definitely uh, uh, is is strengthened by that bold mark making. You know, looking at your sketchbook stuff because you l really highlight your sketchbooks as art objects in and of themselves. I, I don't know if you agree with that, but a lot of people use. I mean, dude, my sketchbooks they, they're horrendous. I, I barely show any of it because it's it's this chicken scratch. But your stuff in and of itself, the the sketchbook in and of itself is like a collection of your work. And uh, especially in this illustrated style, can you talk a little bit about like how you – I've noticed other artists do this too. Why, why do you feel like um, for you it's worth investing in the sketchbook and treating it like this completed published like thing? You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, yeah, I guess with that said, like I mean back in the day, <clears throat> I used to treat sketchbooks as like a – <clears throat> kind of like a mix of like just writing in notes and just doing let random doodles, but not really kind of taking it seriously. Like maybe every so often I would do like a, a fully rendered page. And then the next page is just like notes or a grocery list or whatever, you know, just kind of like using it as just kind of like a, I don't know, just like a notepad, I, I guess. But, but uh, yeah, somehow over time, it, it kind of just, just switched at one point where um, I guess once I got into the habit of, of doing like daily drawings, um, I uh, I guess yeah. Once I started doing like one one or two pages, or I was to say, once I started doing like a series of pages in a row, I guess off of the momentum of that, kind of just kept me going to where like I ended up turning it into a thing where well, not necessarily a thing that I would think about, but I would just continue the pace of doing like a drawing a day within the sketchbook, and then uh, when it got to the point where I fully completed like one book, I was like, oh, this is actually pretty cool that like I actually you know, committed to the process and actually had a finished, completed sketchbook. And once, once you kind of, yeah, hey, because once I got that momentum going, it just became like a, a natural thing where I don't even think about it. I just kind of just jump into the book and just kind of go with it and, and try also not to get too, I don't know, too, um, Think of it, I mean, yeah, I, I try not to get too precious with it and, and kind of just use it more as like a daily practice. And um, and it's been kind of fun just kind of experimenting like with, with it along the way. But um, yeah, for the most part, like I said, once it became like a daily habit, then it, then it just became like a second nature thing. And, you know, um, but then the, the upside is the end product is like that I do have like a finished compiled, you know, collection. And it's, it's nice, like in that regard that it's its own art piece in a sense. So, yeah, Dude, yeah. it's a hundred percent. And it's interesting because building the habit to do it every day clearly is going to be, make you better at your craft. And then the better you get at your craft, the better those daily entries get. And then it gets to the point where what might be like, um, you know, a part of your routine, uh, for you looks like, you know, an incredibly high end finished work of art for, um, anybody who's enjoying them. And I've always been, I have to be honest with you, I've always been so envious of that because there's like, there's these pictures that you've sent me that, that we're going to show here of just all of your sketchbooks closed, 
You know, they're not even open. There's one, there's page, and they're all like different sketchbooks and the years that you, you know, worked in them, the stickers on them. It is such, to me, those things are so exciting. I love looking at artists' sketchbook. I love uh, artists who treat their sketchbooks like a journal, like a diary, like just a lived-in object. Like this is where your mind goes, you know. You take notes. You make lists. You make the artwork. Going back and looking at those things sometimes, I don't know. Do you do that? Because I, I look at back at my old like college sketchbooks, and you know, they're they're insane, but – uh, I imagine for you there might be enough cohesion there because of how um, habitually you worked in them that it almost is like transporting you to a different time. And when yeah. do you do you get that sensation at all? Do you do that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, especially like uh, like the more noticeable ones is like when I go back to the my very first sketchbooks that I've I've actually fully completed and looking at how I handled like um. So I guess so that's another thing too. It's like. It, it helped that I committed to just using uh, brush pens and um, and there's like a few things that kind of like morphed into kind of incorporating like mixed media stuff, like some of the highlighter stickers and stuff like you you'll, we'll probably get into in, in a bit as we kind of show some of those images. But um, like I said, a lot of that be, just became like an organic like process, but but just committing to like the brush pen and just going straight into the sketchbook and then also kind of like limiting myself to just that medium kind of just help the help sustain i guess the focus and the momentum to kind of do it every day so it's like one less thing to think about it's just like open the sketchbook use the brush pen what comes to mind just go at it and then you know get it out the way and then kind of just repeat the process kind of day day after day but um so yeah like i guess to answer your question like going back to like the older work it was interesting seeing the transition uh in technique like the way I would handle, say, like uh, the texture of like a person's hair or a texture of like a, a bird's like feathers. I used to get really into like um, uh, trying to get in like every kind of like detail in the hair and like really trying to get really detailed. And as the years passed in the process of um, of using the tool, uh, there was a transition in, in where I started to simplify a lot of those details and try to see like, um, like how can I illustrate a similar subject matter, but with a limited amount of strokes versus like, like how, like how many strokes can I make to, to illustrate like someone's hairstyle in, in a less amount of strokes versus doing like a hundred strokes, just trying to get all the details of the hair. So like, that was an interesting organic thing where it, it wasn't like I was planning to do it. It was just more like as I was developing, those were the things that were keeping me interested and keeping me keeping the process fresh. Cause obviously if you do everything for the same day for like years, there, there comes a point where, you know, like how, how do you reinvent yourself or how do you keep it interesting? Right. So, um, so for me, I, th I thought that was kind of like an interesting thing where when I do look back, at the older stuff, like I do see how much I have grown, like, you know, everything from, like I said, like simplifying like line work to even like, um, like proportions or even like subject matter, like where I'm, I try to, I think as I go, I try to kind of push things further. So I feel like, yeah, if you were to look through my, my most recent sketchbook versus, you know, say something I did in like 20, I don't know, 13, I, I feel like you, you'll start to see like some of those like noticeable differences but yeah and then in, in that regard you get to see like how it actually progresses in time it's pretty fun to me i hope anybody who has been interested in making artwork or or creating their own stuff t hears that and uh takes that to heart like part of the benefit of working and drawing and 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 building a habit to you know hone your craft as frequently as daily, uh, part of the benefit of that is you start to realize what you need, what you don't, what you can eliminate. You're basically, as a visual artist, you're trying to communicate an idea uh, clearly, you know, and um, how you do that is different depending on the artist. But yeah, what you're talking about is what do I actually need to include uh, to, to get this across? And I think that is where I start to notice my... Uh, style kind of like be born is when I was only using what I needed, reducing it to those uh, core 
elements of of the of the image and then playing with those on their you know basic elements like like breaking something down to its bare uh, ingredients and then using those ingredients and building it back up in a different way. It's really abstract notion, but if you think of it that way, I think that's how we all get there in the sense that we all, I mean, in my experience, it's important to learn to work from, you know, observation. Everybody talks about it. Like, you know, you know observation is important, understand form reality, but eventually if you want to stand out, you can't just stay there. You got to go somewhere else. And dude, so speaking of standing out, I look at the, your body of work and yet yeah, those – to me, the, the ability to work the way you're describing, to be fluid, to be consistent, uh, to create a, a, a giant amount of artwork, um, it, it makes total sense that you chose the medium you chose. Your style was kind of born out of that medium and that approach. But then you know, recently um, when I saw – well, let me not get to that yet. Coming out of that style – when I met you, you had these incredible uh, action figures, like these designer toys on display. And if anybody knows me, they know I love you know 3D. I love designer vinyl, love toys like that. Um, but those figures were so striking when I saw them um, at Five Points particularly, I believe. And they feel like a natural evolution of those bold areas of solid black, clean, you know, open areas of color. Um you know, the, just exactly what you need to convey a form and still have that good, good tactile feel. What was it like for you translating uh, your work into that style? Did it, did you change how you were thinking at all? Did you feel like you had to approach stuff from a different way? Uh, how was that like for you designing in 3D? Um, Yeah, for sure. I mean, well, well, for one, like in with that project, I collaborated with a, a fellow uh, 3D artist uh, by the name of Eli. Um, you know, big shout out to him for uh, being down to to collaborate on this, this this that particular toy project you're talking about. But yeah, as far as like when it came down to, um, you know, going from ideation to like a tangible finish, like you know, product. Uh, yeah, it was like by far like a a, a crazy. Yeah, overall, like learning process, it, it just you know from start to finish, and I mean to some degree, I've had. Um, like just in my, my general work experience, like I've worked, um, within like, you know, the, the gaming industry, well, yeah, within the gaming industry to a certain degree where I've done, um, some conceptual art that I would, you know, hand off to like a 3d artist and they would take those, you know, that initial concept and turn it, turn it into like a 3d image. So in a, in a sense, um, I've got already like I've already had like a design sensibility to understanding that process. So I guess the only difference in this particular case was this was like my own creation and my own um, kind of got I guess guided by my own creation and just yeah just like I said just going from like an ideation concept into like a tangible form. But yeah, for the most part, um, I guess just to generalize like the the overall process, it, it was it was a trip to you know. Like it's one thing to draw something from one angle, but to really consider all the angles and like how do you how do you find that common ground to where every angle that you kind of like look at the image, like how do you find it to where it it, it just makes sense visually as like a whole? So um, yeah, so like I said, for the most part, there was like a lot of back and forth with like me and Eli, where I started out with the initial like um, you know front back side kind of I you know. I guess diagram layout to him um, working off of that, and then he would send me screen caps, or he would give me like a a, a link to where I could kind of like move around his three D um, uh, sculpt, and then I would go back and do like red line or do like some drawings over that to kind of like you know try to hone in on some of those like minute details, and yeah, we just kept going back and forth like you know. Um, for a series of, of months till we got down to like, you know, the finished, finished product. And mind you, we're also doing this in between our day jobs and such. So uh, I love how it feels like a natural extension of your work. And uh, I think part of that is that your design sense is so strong. A lot of uh, artists that I'm a big fan of, I feel like they could have made a living as graphic designers if they had to, because I look for that in the work that I love. It's not just great 
you know, drafts, uh, draftsman uh, skills. It's not just um, a unique style, but also how you choose to lay things out, how you uh, work with color. All those things are so important to me. And um, it is, is obvious because when I, we go to your next to your newest body of work, the one that you were showing at Hashimoto Contemporary, the, it's mm-hmm. a departure in a way from what you're doing. I mean, now you're working. Mm-hmm. I believe you're doing is, is, these are painted in, in oils. Uh, this this collection of work is actually all acrylic. Acrylic painting. So yeah, it's like it's yeah. it's very figurative. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of exploration of form and nature. But there's still this sense of like the way you kind of stylize and you're using like uh, planar shapes, like big areas of, of c- color. Um, and it still kind of has that graphic sensibility, although there are areas that are rendered very naturally and realistically. Can you talk about why you chose or why you decided you wanted to explore this different uh, body of work what does it mean for your older stuff do you feel like you're evolving into something separate new mm-hmm. or do you think this is something that you're gonna like also have uh in your in your no pun intended bag of tricks i i, I wonder after i saw your body of work if there's a future where both styles start to come together where there is that uh fully rendered form and then there's you know maybe on top of it linear graphic stuff uh but yeah it's fantastic T- talk about that a little bit like this style yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, so I, I guess um, I was already familiar with, with working with the medium acrylic, but to work with acrylic at the scale, that's like a whole nother like process because obviously you have to factor like ground and, um, you know, uh, like what makes sense and, and how you render something at that scale or whatnot. But I guess the, so some of the things you mentioned about like the, the graphic uh, elements mixed in with the more render uh, um content um yeah that was a that was the thing that i, I was just kind of just trying out within the process because i mean there were some aspects of, of the painting where i started out and i kind of went i started to go full render but then i noticed once i started going that route for people uh, who don't know what that means people, by the way full render you you mean like making it look you know representative of the source like looking realistic yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. When I say render, I, I, I mean like, like doing like, um, um, paint, painting, painting an image and kind of like trying to, to, trying to push dimension within, within the, the subject matter versus when I say flat, flat, a lot of times it's just, um, I don't know how else to say it, but I guess flat <laughs> with, with lack, lack of rendition, right? Like, and, and yeah. bold and 3d bold. versus 2d looking. Yeah. Yeah, so um, so it was interesting, kind of playing with that in in in, in the process of creating these pieces, because um, you know, like what I was saying, where I was trying to think in in terms of more uh, um, approaching these pieces with more of a conceptual uh, um, mindset, where I wanted to spotlight of the figures within the work, so um, and to spotlight it when she do things of more rendered, you know, technique. And then you backdrop it with something flat. Automatically, it pops out. And the the initial focus when you see the image is a lot of times the things that are more rendered, just because there's more detail and there's more things happening. And then you know you contrast it to like a, a very bold flat background. Automatically, is gonna you know make that. Yeah. Make and that, dude, uh, you know? what what is the what is the uh, idea behind the work? Is there like a, like a concept behind this body mm-hmm. of work? If people check it out. Yeah, I mean, there's like a loose, very loose theme. Uh, and then, you know, I could get into, I feel like, you, well, I could also get into specifics per piece, but as as an overarching, yeah, over overarching narrative for the most part, um, I just wanted to um, dive back into like um, things that relate to my background and, and things that uh, I was um, inspired by within like, uh, like my youth and specifically the decade between 1990 and uh, 2000, where, um, I mean, just a quick, you know, quick background, like uh, my father was in the military and we moved around a lot. And um, fortunately we got to live in some really unique areas. And and most of those areas were like uh, different parts of Asia. So it was like Japan, Okinawa, Hawaii, um, and all that within that particular decade. But also like, that's when I, I felt like, um, how should I say, um, uh, I guess when I think in terms of like things that, that molded me as a person, but also when I think in terms of inspiration, a lot of that came from that, that decade, 
And when it came to these images, um, I was trying to think in terms of like, how or how can I depict certain certain things that that represent parts or bits of experiences or nostalgia from that particular decade? And the pieces that you see within that show um, are pretty much hints of of that time frame. So. Yeah, I mean, I strongly encourage anybody who hasn't checked out your work to go and follow you on Instagram at bags43. Uh, you know, a quick thing I want to mention is that, Dennis, you're also an employee at Super 7. Uh, what's your official position there for people who are curious? Um, yeah, title-wise, I'm, uh, I'm a, currently I'm a senior, senior graphic designer there. Packaging that you work on is outstanding. Like, we're going to show some of it. And I, I wanted to highlight that, not because it's necessarily your – body of work you know is represented by the packaging design and all that but it 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 stands to testament to you know when you look at super seven product there is an art an artisan uh, quality to all the work that they do and it's because guys like dennis they're fully you know rounded artists with great bodies of work that really think about this stuff that really put in their time and develop an incredible aesthetic it goes into that kind of stuff and it makes a difference so i strongly recommend he's a great follow on instagram the time lapse videos he puts up, the post it note illustrations are incredible. Like you to me highlight what a great creator it uh, is in the sense that you have a tremendous amount of output. You explore a lot of media, and uh, I think there's always a thread of your style, your work, uh, going through all of it. So it's exciting to see. I love looking at it myself, man. So uh, yeah, it, tell people where they can follow you aside from Instagram if there is something else you want to promote there. Um, I would say currently, I would say just Instagram is the, the most, um, updated, I guess, go to for me. Cause I, I literally, I literally post everything on there. So the yeah. best. Yeah. He's a great follow. Check out his work. It's beautiful. Share it. It looks, uh, and, and by the way, I know your store is not up right now, but when he does merch drops, jump <laughs> on them. Cause they go quick. The stuff looks fantastic. I still got to get exactly. some more stuff. Yeah. I love it. I love your designs, man. Amazing. Uh, Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, thank you, Dennis, again for joining us uh, at Bags43 on Instagram. Um, he's amazing. Follow him. Uh, tell me what you think. Tag him, all that kind of stuff. Amazing. Thanks, dude. Appreciate you coming on.